When I picture my mum when I was a kid, I see me on one hip, a vacuum in the other hand, queens I want to break free playing in the background. I see her braid her hair back in 10 seconds flat. I say, how do you do that? Can you do mine next? I remember hugging legs as they stood at the kitchen sink, knees peering out of faded jeans that weren't ripped when she bought them. I hear, hold on to the buggy, stay in front of me, on weekday mornings with the baby, dog, brother and two other kids that she used to look after, that she'd push to the bus stop come rain or shine, often with us riding scooters or bikes that she'd have to drag home on her own on the rewind. I feel temper tantrums of not wanting to go to bed because I was not tired, unaware of every night she stayed up late and got up early and never said she was tired. I could smell dinner cooking. I could taste homemade lunches, feel the weight of packed school bags by the door ready to grab, feel clean pajamas and fresh sheets after a bath, hear the steam go as she's up till midnight ironing clothes and then downstairs making breakfast while we're still warming our toes. She was a nurse, hairdresser, teacher and therapist, chef, vet, dry cleaner, gardener, nutritionist, driver, mechanic, toy fixer, spider catcher, kiss it betterer, Santa seer, personal shopper, sponsor, pep talker, dog walker, New Yorker, mum, sister, daughter, kitten stuck in tree, Laura, juicer of fresh juice, mooser of chocolate mousse, remedy of misuse, victim of domestic abuse. And I remember when we finally left that house, bad. Her working two jobs and us living at granddad's. I remember resenting her for that because she wasn't home. I'd come back from school on my own. She'd say goodnight over the phone. It wasn't the mum that I'd known. Truth is, she was alone, doing it all by herself. She'd boxed up her dreams and shoved them on a top shelf. But if she'd had a book like this in 2002, well, she might have dropped some of those weights a little sooner. See, as we grew older in our new neighbourhood, friends started showing up with hand-me-downs and food. Mates picked us up from school, neighbours mowed the lawn, even Grandad pulled his weight, fed the dog when we were getting home late. One year, a mental winter storm ripped our entire fence away. But a dozen local blokes showed up the next day and worked for 12 hours to put it back up, make it straight. Your village is who you want it to be. Modern day family is not about biology. My mum, a strong woman who was independent, found freedom in interdependency. Still making moves, still making money, but worth more than the house she keeps. So build your village, let people in. Build your hopes and dreams and kin. Your shelter is your community. Ask for help you'll find affinity. Drop that ball, just wait and see.